Sir. Hi, welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie authors on their journey to publication. My name is Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I'm Christina Katane, and I write uh, biblical fiction. <laughs> I don't know what I write. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write fiction and nonfiction under the pen name Dee Dee Bowman with my mother, Barbara Bauk. I'll take genres for 500, Alex. <laughs> yes. Well, we are feeling discombobulated today because as you can see, we are three and not four. Normally, our good friend Jennifer Carl Tong, who is, by the way, a best-selling Amazon author, just like our co-host Christina Katain. Yay for both of those ladies. Big shout out to them. If you're not familiar with Jennifer's work, please go to jennifercarltong.com. She spells her name with one N in the Jennifer and two L's in the Carl. And make sure you harass her for skipping today for such an unimportant thing as a wedding in her family. Can you believe <gasps> how Whatever. could she write? So anyway, we do really sincerely pray for the happy couple and for everybody wonderful blessings and wedding bells that's super fun that she gets to do that this weekend so um good luck to her and we're gonna introduce everybody else um with a what's up but our chat is very active this morning also we've got piper and Gigi and maria already saying hello good morning, good morning. everyone and uh what is up with you today rhonda are you going to a wedding this weekend I am not going to a wedding this weekend. I'm going to an estate sale though. So Ooh. that's fun. Okay. <laughs> what are you looking for? Like buttons? Like when, when you're going, what are you hunting for? Yes, definitely buttons. Always um, old postcards. I try to hit most of them. The really old, like the ones that say 60 years of decluttering, whatever, uh, in this area, looking for genealogy things for the museum. Okay. And what museum is that? Because we don't plug your museum enough and you oh. invest a lot of time and energy over there. So what museum is that? Well, that is the Atlas Township Historical Museum and Association. But then also right next door, there is the Grand Blank Historical Society. Well, it's about 15 miles away, but those two are the ones that I work for. Are they open right now? Are you guys like letting people come in and look around at the artifacts or? The one in Atlas, we're trying to put some more things online. Because uh, we don't we don't have a lot of availability there anyway. We don't have a lot of volunteers, and it's very very small. But the museum in Grand Blank, we just opened two. This is our third week open. Mm, okay, I want to ask you a question. If I went to like my local museum where I grew up in the town I grew up, mm -hmm. what do you think the odds are that someone in my family or a name I've heard is going to be like featured in an article? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, should someone go to their local? What would they find there? Yeah, you can find all sorts of things. Um, usually there will be, if you're looking for genealogy information, there's going to be an obituary file. There's going to be marriage and um, birth records, photographs. People donate their family photographs. You've got your shoe boxes from your grandma. None mm -hmm. of the backs are labeled with names. Mm -hmm. And they bring them in and donate them. And we're able to actually find out. Who, we know a lot of people. What? Photograph. Yes. In a small <laughs> enough town. Because... Um, there were certain people that would have cameras. Mm -hmm. The brownies came out around uh, 1910 or so, and only a handful of people had those. And they mm -hmm. went around towns taking pictures of entire families. And mm -hmm. so there's a web. And they would and, keep records, right? Yes. The people who had a camera would be writing mm -hmm. down who they're, because they cared, right? Like, yeah. 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 Wow. Because so you don't take 15 photographs of one flower back then. Right. You take right. one photograph and you write down what it was and where it was. Because the materials were very precious. Yes. Okay. So then if you have an old photo of a relative that you need help identifying who the person is, they could go to their local genealogy mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. and maybe strike like a cold case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of a win. Me. How fun. Okay. So if you like historical or cozy, Rhonda writes kind of both. She's working on a series where a girl um, runs a historical society in a town that is very active and full of great characters. So I just Wasn't wanted to mention that. Tina, what is up with you this week? 
Um, well, I just got back from a glamping trip. <laughs> um, we went out to the. We have a we have a camper, and <laughs> it has a couple slide outs on it, and um, you know, so we have a pretty big kitchen and a big screen TV and recliners. <laughs> so I call it the glamper. Um, nice yes, you know, and, you having know. grown up in Alaska, this is not camping. Like we're <laughs> on a permanent lot on a campground. We never go anywhere. No bears to fight off. No, you know, unless, you know, my husband gets hungry, but, well, the, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was my husband's 50th birthday this week. And he said Aww. he just wanted to take a week off and get away. So that's what Aww. we did. And it's been kind of, we got to see most of my kids. So. Yeah, life as a pastor is uh, no Saturdays, right? Like, I mean, you're always on when you're a pastor. So to just kind of get out of your environment, I think, is right. really a nice treat. It's and nice we present. work on Sunday, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's like, it's a weird time of life for me. Um, my kids, like, they're there momentarily, and then they're just gone, you know, like. They don't need you anymore. Like they're mm -hmm. they're all up north right now together having fun. Mm -hmm. Oh well, that's kind of nice though. Yeah, like, I'm glad yeah. they're close. Like, <laughs> yeah. Nobody thought to invite mom along, you know. But <laughs> not that I could have gone, but so. But I got some important um, progress done in my book. Yeah. For the week, so looking, all right, things are looking up. Wonderful. That's great. We got a lot of chat going on in the room here. Tina, if you can help me with the tech part and we can check out the what's up. Piper said she had a surge in downloads on Sunday. She's not sure what it was prompted from, but almost 500. Whoa. Wow. That's awesome. Also, she sent the very rough draft of her book three to the developmental editor for a first read through for pacing. Smart. Smart girl. Yes. Okay. Who okay. else has a what's up to share with us? Maria. What's up? Writing the fourth historical fiction novel, doing a website and newsletter stuff. Exciting writing thing happened this week. I'll share soon, but it will be a scoop in my newsletter tomorrow. You better go get Very Maria's cool. newsletter. That's the way to tease Maria. Good job. Yeah. I and totally want to make sure. I, she, we have been with Maria since her second novel, right? Yes. She was writing her second. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she's really been go and she's moved. And had to change a career for her husband. Anyway, uh, oh, so more, up. yeah, general life, what's up? First Sunday, there we go, in the new church last Sunday. Hubs did really well. Everyone was friendly and welcoming. Thanks for your prayers about that. Right. They just assumed the vicarage. So yeah. good for them and congratulations. Yep. Great. I assume her life is just like Father Brown. That is what I picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Piper. it's exact. Yes. Piper, the next time, let's just get together and have our own party, and we won't invite any of the kids. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Piper says her daughters do fun stuff, and she's like, where's my invite? That's cute, Tina. Yeah, you can have a mommy play date, you know? Oh, yeah. You used to have to organize them for your kids, but once your kids are gone, I think that's what scrapbooking weekends are. I think they're play dates in disguise, right? Yeah. Yeah. For or sure. women's although, retreats or writing retreats. I don't do scrapbooking, <laughs> but yeah, writing yeah. retreats. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, we should do another writing retreat, but we should actually write this time, Jamie. Like, it was all my fault that the last time we I got together. I thought we did write last time. We did. Did we write anything, Rhonda? Are, are you talking about the last time you came out? Yes. We talked about writing. We talked, yes. But that we, wasn't really a writing retreat. That was for my book launch party. I yeah. think I, oh, that's so true. That doesn't count. That's true. We, that's we true. didn't have to write. Oh, thanks, Tina. Thanks yeah. for excusing me from the guilt I was heaping upon myself. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'd like to um, say hello to Leah. And I didn't make your live stream the other day, but I did watch it. Hi, Leah. Okay. Oh, and uh, Maria's laughing. She says, Rhonda, not quite. It's not quite Father Brown. She'll oh. let you know if oh. the hub starts trying to solve yes. crap. Yes, please <laughs> keep me involved. Ha actually, if there's murder in the vicarage, uh, move away. But anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we um, have one more from our chat. One more. Yeah, yeah. Leah says uh, she's pioneers in petticoats, which I love that. In the grind to my finish. Ooh, currently at almost 80,000 words on book nine of a historical series. That sounds fun, especially with that name. A plethora of life crises are trying to stall out my progress, but I'm pushing through. Oh, the good externals. Oh, good for you for keeping focus. <clears throat> That's yeah. what who I want to be when I grow up. Somebody <laughs> yeah. working on their ninth novel. Yes. <laughs> 
Well, soon, I will soon. use uh, Leah's what's up as a segue into my own because she's like trying to uh, ignore the externals and stay focused. And I got to tell you guys what, you know, I hate social media, but I have discovered Clubhouse and Becca Syme was trying to get people on Clubhouse. But I knew she was a single gal and a lot of the things she was doing on Clubhouse was networking for single people. And that didn't really sound like anything I would have any interest in. And when I originally accepted my Clubhouse invite from her, I didn't know how to find rooms that were going to inspire me. But since I have managed to tap into a network of people over on Clubhouse that are very optimistic and encouraging. And and I just want to say to you, if you're looking for someone to be a cheerleader for you, get into Clubhouse and find a group of people because you can turn on Clubhouse and just soak and listen to the wisdom that people are spitting in real time. And these are real life people who are trying to uh, also keep their eyes on the prize. You do have to watch out because, of course, everybody's trying to sell you their $500 a month coaching sessions or whatever. But there are genuine people in there making connections. I kid you not really listening to one another's heart because the the um, picture is all that you get. There's no, you know, uh, visual components. And so people have to really listen to what you say. And if you feel like you're not heard, there's a way to get heard. I just want to give uh, Clubhouse a great big shout out. I am out of invites. I'm sorry. Um, hit Tina up or someone else in your network to connect you. I currently have five invites. Um and it's available on Android now, for those of you who didn't know that. Like, it used to be just mm -hmm. available on Apple, but it is mm -hmm. available on Android, too, as well. Yep. Don't and do I, it because Jamie's doing it. Do it because you can find something of value about it. I just wanted to add that in there. Go, Rhonda. No, no. You need to do it because Jamie's doing it because she's always up on the top thing at the moment. So, yeah. <laughs> but I've also got some invites. And if you guys do join a clubhouse, let us know. Yeah, yeah, because I really think I'm probably going to end up having a room over there eventually, but I'm still learning how things work and, and things like that, and also getting brave enough to do it. Like, let's just be honest, that's the big deal because, you know, you put yourself out there and you're just asking for it. Yeah. And I'm not sure I want it. Yes. So that's what I'm working through. And that's the kind of thing I go over to Clubhouse for because the people there give me wings and tell me, don't be afraid. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Very yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're oh. going to launch what? What's that? One What's more that? thing. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody needs to wish Gigi a happy birthday week. <gasps> it's Gigi's oh. birthday week. Happy birthday. <clears throat> I almost like screamed. I should have blown <laughs> everybody's ears out. <laughs> yeah. I hope that she's going to get to do something super special and fun for Gigi. What does Gigi like to do for her birthday? I'd love to know. So tell us in the chat. Um, if you're not in our chat, by the way, that's on YouTube. Like they have to watch us on YouTube to be in the chat. Right, Rhonda? Uh, you can, uh, I think, well, I don't think it's on Facebook. So you had to go to, I know you can find it there, right, Tina? Yes, there is a chat on Facebook, but it's kind of lonely. I know that Jason <laughs> used to go over there and be Aww. the only one there. And then if you're on the Facebook chat, you can't see, like we have a little screen because we're on StreamYard where we can see both YouTube and Facebook that shows up in the, in the chat. And so everybody eventually migrates over to face and over to YouTube because they can't see the Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So find see, us on YouTube. So. It's a great bunch of chatters. That's why we're all excited about Gigi's birthday because she's been a cheerleader for us. Um, we we don't need Clubhouse when Gigi shows up. <laughs> and uh, Maria and Piper and Jason and all the other people who I'm forgetting to mention who regularly come to our chat make it just amazing every Friday. And uh, some new people like Leah showing up um, really make this a dynamic community. So we appreciate you. Or Friday. Oh, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we try to give uh, valuable content in our podcast this week. We want to try to save you a little bit of money. That's right. We're trying to help you economize when it comes to getting your project edited because doing an edit can cost a lot of money. If you calculate, just go and look at having someone edit your book and look at how much it costs per cent, like uh, per word you know, and then multiply by how many words your manuscript is, and you will quickly see what an investment it is to hire an editor. And nobody would ever say it is a good idea to publish a book without having it edited. Um, but there are arguments and debates about whether um, spending that kind of money is necessary or needful. So we're going to maybe preface the conversation by saying we are not a group of 
writers who are going to say, do not publish if you can't afford a professional edit. Am I speaking on behalf of you guys also? Yes, okay. definitely. Yes. Um, if you cannot afford a professional editor, so what? Publish, like do whatever, like get it as best as you can afford to get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give you some tips to, so let's say you have a friend who you know, like if Rhonda's your good friend and you know that she's good with punctuation or something, and you're going to ask her to help you out and you're going to pay her something and you know you can't afford to pay her what she's worth. Why not get your copy as clean as it can be before you send it over to Suzy Q and then you're not giving Suzy Q such a headache, right? If you want to frame it that way, you are helping out the person who's going to be helping you out by taking some very preliminary steps to get your manuscript ready for an editor. Is that about what we're going to cover today, girls? Yeah. And I would say, even if you are sending it to a professional editor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you should, you should do some self-editing first and try to get the manuscript as clean as you can mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you send it to that professional editor. Well, and even if you're going to pitch your novel, you want to do a self-edit before you pitch. Like if you decide you're going to try to get an agent and you're like even people who are going to traditionally publish, you don't just send in your raw, you know, your raw and rough. OK, here's 50,000 words. Go. Am I wrong? Mm -mm. No, you're not wrong. All right. So, Rhonda, what do you want to say about just in general why it's a good idea to do a first edit? Well, the first thing that I wanted to say, which isn't one of our top 10, we didn't talk about this That's before, fine. is um, <clears throat> join a writing group. Find a group of writers around you that will help you and encourage you. And you never know what sort of free editing services you can get from that. Because our writing group, we've all done some sort of editing for the others. And it's been very helpful mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Join and stay. Yeah. Join and stay. Pick it and out. if you if you don't like the dynamic, be the change you wish to see. Mm -hmm. And the people who are like minded will stay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, exactly. because, the you know, if everybody is pulling in the direction of giving wings instead of slamming down, it's going to be a positive environment. So be the change you wish to see until everybody's on board. Right. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And even if you don't like some of the things that your writing group has to say, just give it a chance. They might be very valid. Maybe you've never, I think at one time, all four of us have wanted to quit the writing group at some point because we were like, ah, but just stick it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to sit and marinate on that stuff because it might not sound like good feedback to you today, but then two weeks from now, it'll just occur to you that person is totally right because I mm -hmm. could put a magical castle in act two and that would mm -hmm. solve this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, and also make sure that you do speak out mm -hmm. about what you need from the group. Don't be quiet. Um, don't think that <clears throat> your needs and desires are going to upset your writing group because right. they want you to enjoy the experience. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And if your writing group tells you to rewrite your entire book, <laughs> Just wait for a year and become a bestseller and realize what great advice that was. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we did put together top 10 tips in advance. I love Rhonda's bonus tip. It should have been number one. But we do have top 10 that we didn't put in an order, except we had uh, – a couple that we thought were super important, right? Uh -huh. um, I can't remember which ones they were, Tina. Help. The first one is to put some space. And when we mean space, we it could be physical space, but chronological space. And emotional you, space. Right. You just yes. take a break, put it aside. I think that most of the time when I've heard this recommendation from the experts, you know, I'm putting that in quotes. Um, they say 30 days is kind of the average that you should put it aside. But you know you. And so you might need more than 30 days. You might only need two weeks. But just put some space between you and your piece. And if you don't know you yet, because you're a newbie noob from Newbieville, <laughs> what you need to do is think about, would it offend me if someone said something negative about this work? If you say yes, you're not ready. Because it has to be to the place where you see it as a commodity that needs refining and polishing before it can go to market. You are selling a product at this point. You've already created it. 
Now we're going to polish it and put it out for marketing. It's two separate things. You can't be as invested as you were when you were creating the piece. Now it's time to put it out there for everybody and it needs to be the best iteration of its existing self as it can be. So if you're not ready yet to be critical of it, you're not ready yet to take a stab at fixing it because you can't even see what's wrong until you can objectively agree that there's something wrong that needs fixing. That was okay. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much. So our first tip is put space between you and the work. Who wants to take a crack at the next one? Go ahead, Tina. Okay, look for overused words. Mm -hmm. And I have a little story to tell mm -hmm. about that one um, because it goes into some of our um, subtopics on, on this tip is um, when you are, we, you, we all have those words we use too much. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's the, maybe it's not just a specific word, but a, a phrase or something that we do in our writing that we know is specific to us. Mm -hmm. And we know to go look for that first in the editing. So I use some variation of the word look way too much. I know I do. Looking looks, they're always looking into each other's eyes and saying nothing like, mm -hmm. like um, and so I went to with the find and replace thing on Microsoft Word, and I looked for the word look, and I accidentally deleted them all. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and so my poor um, copy editor, I'm like, can you please try to find all the looks that I <laughs> deleted because I could found some of them. Like it, if it was looking, they left the ING and deleted the look. So if I found an ING like floating out there by itself, I was able to re-add it. But um, yeah, don't, don't do that. Like, so if you have a word, you know, that you use too much, go through your manuscript mm -hmm. and find them and try to find a better word. That means mm -hmm. the same thing. And you don't have to get rid of them all. No. But you just don't want to have, it's just too repetitive. And so mm -hmm. make sure you do, you go through them, each instance of that word individually when you're in your search thing and not, and don't do the replace all or delete all or. Yeah. And that's Whatever. a really, really tough one to hear when your work is new and someone reads it and they're like, well, you just say whatever too much. Like that. How do you gently deliver that? I mean, it's just, and someone's going to tell you, you know, you have a habit of doing that. Like you're going to get, you have to be ready to receive it is what I'm going to say. You, mm -hmm. because you, you have to be able to fix it. And if you can't even hear that there's a problem, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even, because for me, this is the problem. I have a big giant ego and to hear that I've made a mistake in any way is painful. So get over it somehow, right? <laughs> so you probably use like, okay, you probably use the word that way more than you should. The experts all agree that people overuse the word that. So I'm not pointing you out, everyone, and publicly, you know, pulling down your pants, Go and look in your manuscript and see if you have the word that when you don't need to have that, that there. So that's a freebie tip of editing from me to you. So no, that Marina, goes I thought I, I wish I would have thought of the control Z. I could have saved myself a lot of headache. What does control Z do? It, undo. it undo, undoes <gasps> whatever you just did. Oh, I just learned something. Wow. Oh, you just up-leveled my life. Okay, well, with replacing, um, I think going into the adverb problem is a good segue. Tina, talk about how you brought that up because we just changed it to reduce L-Y words. <laughs> right, well, this is something that I do, I and I catch myself as I'm writing, and so I always stop and go back because I literally said, Angelica walk slowly and sadly down the path like or something like that mm -hmm. and i was like no it needs to be a power verb i need to take out that whole phrase walk slowly and sadly down the path and replace it with the power verb that means walking slowly and sadly down the path so i put trudging in there she trudged mm -hmm. down the path mm -hmm. um and so Anytime you see a word with L-Y, slowly, happily, sadly, or an emotion word, I always, I always look for emotion words too. If I say she was sad or I, 
I mentioned the emotion, that's a clue to me that I need to go back in there. And that might be a whole different tip. I know. But, I love that. Just seeing the LY should trigger you to look closer. Right. Yeah. Look closer and see if you can tighten that up and, um, and use a power verb in there. Like instead of looking longingly at the moon, she could gaze at the moon. Um, so things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and again, uh, emphasis on author's choice, right? Sometimes right. you want to use the L-Y word and you can, but to know that there is a more, I don't know, a different option. Out <clears throat> Rhonda. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just very you. late studying for this today. <laughs> That was awesome. I love it. So look for the L-Y words because maybe you can have an opportunity there is what Tina. And we are talking about not proofreading, right? There is a difference. Now, I picked on you, Rhonda, a little bit earlier about being an editor because proofreading is what you do well. And we're not talking about that, are we, Rhonda? So what would no. be the difference between this and proofreading? Proofreading is looking for periods, looking for missing commas, apostrophes, the grammar, uh, making sure you've got your there, there, there's right. And that sort of thing. That's all the technical things that are super easy for an editor to just go through and catch. Yeah. So proofreading um, might not even cost you as much money as this kind of editing, which I guess we would sort of call developmental in some ways, line editing. Because developmental is making sure that like if you ride into the, mm -hmm. you know, tunnel on one horse, you don't mm -hmm. come out riding on a different horse because you don't have continuity of your plot. That's like a developmental edit. A yeah. line edit is to make sure things like Tina is saying, we don't have overuse of words. Mm -hmm. We don't have um, sentences out of order in your paragraphs and things like that. So yeah. these are all things that you need to understand because you can pay for three different kinds of editing. Mm -hmm. But if you know that you're going to need a proofreader, me, then maybe you should focus a little harder on trying to tighten up the other edits before you ask for help. This is all yes. we're doing. I yes. just want to point out that um, Gigi has oh. availed herself <laughs> of some of our free resources. If you yes. join our newsletter, wow, we they're have still a there. critique cheat sheet on which we have a critique sandwich. <laughs> I forgot I about that. that. Me too. Good. Yeah. Ouch, good. Yes, yeah. if you have to offer critique, sandwich the critique yeah. between two delicious compliments. Yeah. You should give 20 compliments for every yeah. critique. That will help your writing booth group also be awesome. Because yeah. the more you compliment people, the happier they are to show up for writing group and the better mood they are in. Mm -hmm. If people are coming to writing group afraid of what's going to happen to them, you're not going to get them at their best, just saying. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, can I say one more thing about yes. editing? Yeah. Um, if you are going to put money into editing, then really figure out for yourself which editing you really need. Because like Jamie said, I don't need a proofreader. I really no, don't. you don't. Develop I have the world's best developmental editor. Um, and she's only got time for me. So just don't even worry. I'm I not even going to say her name. She totally dumped me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but if you hire a developmental <sighs> editor and you're not getting the kind of feedback that you're hoping for, try another one. If you can splurge on a second one, then I'll tell you, it is so worth it. Appreciate. Much appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm getting so busy. Oh, Gigi says she's paying attention. Yes. Gigi watches everything we do. She's like a little cheerleader for us. Yeah. We love it. Okay, okay. So where were we? I've lost my place on the outline. Someone You are going to talk about checking paragraphs. Oh, yeah. So, um, yes, I have done some developmental editing and I feel so bad because I send back the piece. And because of the way that the editor works, it's like all this red. But all I've done is rearrange the sentences that the author sent to me to make them make better sense in the paragraph. Because what I've noticed is that the paragraph will be a mini story of something that happened and the writer will put the action in the wrong order and it just makes the flow of the piece not really quite work. So if you're looking at your paragraph and you're like, I don't understand why this doesn't sound, you know, kind of right. Experiment and ask mm -hmm. yourself, do I have the subject of the paragraph sentence at the top and the resolving, you know, who's going to speak next at the bottom? Like, so if you mention Sarah and Sarah's going to say something, put the thing 
Sarah frowned or whatever about Sarah in the end of your paragraph. Does that make sense? Are you guys catching what I'm saying? Yes. I'd like to add that when yes. you interview your developmental editor, she needs to talk to you like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you understand. All right. Well, I really feel very love tank filled right now. Oh, good. Can I do the next one? Yes. yes. I really want to do the next one. Yes. Like it literally, I'm going to read it off of our outline. Okay. It's so good. <laughs> Look for cliches until the cows come home. <laughs> Search high and low. Never give up. <laughs> We're so funny. <laughs> We're a legend in our own minds. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, I don't think you need to say any. I think we kind of drove that point home. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. But all a right. good cliche is good for a reason. So don't That's get them all. That's true. That What's the true. worst is when you're writing, like I'm writing in whatever, a world that's not today's America, whatever. So like you want to kind of make up your own, but then like the reader doesn't get it. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? Like, so your version of that's the way the cookie crumbles, you know, that's uh -huh. the way the far qua glumbly <laughs> books or something. And then your reader's like, what? So if you have ever pulled that off, I would love to know that you have lore in your book where there's actually catchphrases and stuff like that, that people got it the first time. And you didn't have to say, oh, you know how you normally would say, well, this is how they would say it. Anyway. Mm -hmm. I would like next? to say too, whether it comes to L-Y words or cliches or any of that, this is art. And mm -hmm. if you feel like your art needs cliches and like I could see a, I could see a comedy book yeah. Being completely full of L Y words and mm -hmm. cliches to make it funny. Like mm -hmm. that's just one example. Okay. Yeah. That's my next book. Yeah. <laughs> and when People Magazine interviews you, you could say, I did it my way. That's right. <laughs> right. I mean, you know what? I know what's hilarious is Frank how many is a courses. Of mine. There's so many courses <laughs> out there that you can buy on how to be authentic right now. It's really, really cracking me up. Anyway, it's like nobody even sees the irony there. <laughs> I did the minute you said it. <laughs> All right. I lost our place again. Help me. We Help are me now me. going to read our own writing out loud to our what? Yes. This oh. is Jennifer's tip ah. that he beats into us every week almost. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. had to include it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, mm -hmm. I believe what Jennifer does is she first reads it herself out loud to herself. Because when you're reading it, when you're reading it without reading it out loud, your brain is going to see oh. what you meant to write mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're going to miss things. But when you speak it, read it out loud, you're going to catch things you wouldn't catch if you just read it silently. Mm -hmm. yep. And then she has some, she has Microsoft Word read it to her after mm -hmm. that. Yep. Um, and there are other programs that will do that for you, but mm -hmm. having it being read out loud to you, it's going to pick up even more of those things that your brain wouldn't see mm -hmm. because your brain knows what's supposed to be there. Yeah. Proof that this works is our sprints because when I go to read the sprints we do out loud, I like add things. Like I'm like, oh, I made a mistake. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I mm -hmm. edit like as I'm reading it, although I don't change it when I publish it online, like I'll add the word uh, missed if I knew it was supposed to be there. Do you know what I'm saying? I so, do that too. Yeah. And, I, mm -hmm. and it's like, I mean not to do it. Right. Because yes. we're supposed to be <laughs> sharing the flaws. Yes, too. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. My brain just automatically, like out of my mouth comes the mm -hmm. proper way, even though it's not like that on the page. So you're supposed to stop in in real life when you don't fix it like that's your that's your clue that uh oh and then go and work on that particular piece um we happen to be sharing live in a podcast so we won't right. do that <laughs> um another thing i know other writers do this too um but when i write sentences are very important to me i want them to sound um like they've got some sort of harmony mm. um not like a poem Mm -hmm. But the so the sound of a sentence is very important. To yes, me. me too. Yeah, I've th I thought that it would be. Um, and so reading it out loud to yourself can help you catch those awkward ones. Yes, and especially if you have such a nice voice like Rhonda's. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Wait a second. Now I keep closing the tab to look at you, beautiful ladies, and then I all right use a word processing software. In other words, uh, Microsoft Word could read it to you. I think we already said that. Oh, yeah. Tina, you brought this one up and I'm guilty. It got me right between the eyes. 
pay attention to your dialogue tags. Speak on that, girl. Well, there's just so many ways that you could use dialogue tags to slow down your writing or to um, make it not flow. Like somebody's in an argument, you're using too many dialogue tags. It's not going to be as impactful as mm -hmm. if you can find a way to leave some of them off. Agree. Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, saying he said and she said when you have two people of the same gender in the to conversation, like he, who, like which he, mm -hmm. um, you just want to make sure your dialogue tags are clear. And most of the experts say, if you just say Tina said, like that's almost going to disappear to the reader. But if you say mm -hmm. Tina said like constantly and it's long conversation that you have, if you can find a way to leave some of those Tina said's off, mm -hmm then your, di your dialogue is going to sound much more natural. You know what I think would be a fun thing to do would be to do a dialogue tag um, episode where we just kind of find examples in published literature of people handling it different ways because mm -hmm. sometimes saying said a lot is the answer and sometimes being really flowery about she lifted her face to the morning ray of sun and sighed blah 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 dialogue like when do you know you know right. that's an artist's choice this is art like tina said and right? this is another time that re having it read out loud to you or reading it out loud could really help because you'll if it's awkward then maybe you should change something. I just wanted to say in the chat, Gigi just said that when she reads scenes out loud that are a little tense, her dog will leave the room with its tail tucked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she gets into it. <laughs> uh, it's like one of those dogs that senses when someone's about to have a seizure. Oh, and like they yeah. go warn someone like it has a superpower. That's pretty cool. I know my dogs are always like, we're not in trouble, are we? And they go and sit in their crate and look at me. And I'm like, you know what? What? You know, it's fun. That's awesome. Funny. Piper says, said is a perfectly good dialogue tag. Yes. Don't get in too much of commanded, directed, shouted, whispered, etc. I'm telling you. Yes, sometimes you can really see that a new writer is trying hard to not say said. Um, and I'm just letting you know we notice new writer who's trying hard not to use said in the nicest way possible. I'm going to say it to you. If that's you, just receive it. <laughs> um, Maria says, said or not to said. Huge debate in the writing world. Some people say you should use only said. Others say hardly ever use said. Mm -hmm. Mix it up. That's the place as a new writer. New writer, listen to me. Everybody is going to tell you how to be a good writer like me. Be a good writer like you. You are the only you that can write the way that you mm -hmm. write. Mm -hmm. If yep. they say don't use dialogue tags, but you want to use dialogue tags, then use dialogue tags. Yep. We're just here to tell you how it worked for us. We can't mm -hmm. prescribe for you because we don't live your life. Listen to what worked for us, but don't try to be us. Yep. To totally oh. steal a line from Becca Syme, question the premise. Yes. <laughs> Always yep. question the premise. Yep. Um, and also those dialogue tags can be genre specific too. Uh, for instance, sci-fi fantasy, you can be a little bit more flowery. He blarted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to blart. <laughs> you know what's also fun is you do an improv game where you say she said crossing to the sink and you like make the actor do whatever the dialogue tag is that's really fun to do that would be fun okay whatever i'm squirreling okay we still have a little bit of an outline and we're running out of time what's next delete extra words oh this was mine he nodded his head mm. what's he gonna nod what's he gonna nod except he nodded his, head? his hand <laughs> like he was pretending it was a head. You don't ever nod your knee. <laughs> uh, she shrugged her shoulders. Right now, those are just the two I thought of. I don't know of any others. So oh, no. somebody whatever. put in here. He thought with his brain. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was a Jamie special. <laughs> <laughs> that's a. That's, that's what a I'm really running obvious. out of examples. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would like to say something about this so seriously. Yes. Okay, so this is why my sprints are 150 words and everybody else's are like 300, 400, mm. whatever. Because I cut everything down because I'm mostly a nonfiction writer. And this is where it's really important. You don't need to be flowery with extra words. You just mm -hmm. need to get information out. 
Hemingway was famous yes. for using one word when 50 would do. Yes. He's mm-hmm. got the most famous six word story on the planet. Oh, tell it, tell it. Uh, for sale. Yes. Baby uh, shoes. Baby never shoes. Worn. Never used. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Man, that slaps. Still, after all these years, Hemingway, you can bring it. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a writer goal to bring yeah. it? And Hemingway didn't have to say, he sighed while looking longingly at the empty baby cradle. No. Right. Right. Yeah, he mm-hmm. very easily could have told a whole story about a baby's death or whatever, you know, but he didn't. Right. He did. He did tell a whole story. Right. But without the <clears throat> extra words. So that was yeah. the tip. Don't use extra words. Um, I should write this as an actual content article, shouldn't I, Rhonda? Yes. Like, yeah. Okay. Definitely I'll get on should. that. Listen, everybody should, right? Everybody should write their own top 10 tips and put it on their own blog. If you don't like our top 10, you should write your own. You're all writers out there. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Get- go back and read the comments in the chat if you're watching the, listening to this later, watching it, because all of our chatters are mm-hmm. all authors and they have some really good information yes. that we just don't have time to share what everyone's saying. But- I love them. I love them. And they are all giving positive and encouraging stuff over there. Please and one me. of them, I'm not sure if she wants to be called out, is my editor. And she did a really good job. Ah, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, listen, though. Um, we have one more tip. What is it? Yeah. This uh, is the other piece of bread on our top 10 tips. You know yeah. how we said we wanted the first one we believe is very important for first First yes. things first. And this is a very important thing to end on is get another set of eyes on your work. Okay. If you can't afford to pay anybody, find a writing buddy who, or an English teacher or somebody who you trust to get a, or use alpha readers. Um, use a friend or use a professional editor, but get another set of eyes on your work because your own eyes are going to miss things that a, a second pair of eyes are just going to catch for you. And I would like to throw in a bonus tip for not becoming discouraged during this particular part of the process. Okay. Not everybody in your world is this person. It's not even going to be who you think, like your mom might be your most supportive, biggest fan, but that's not necessarily this person. This person needs to be someone you believe would read your book, like someone who would spend money to buy your book, not just because it's you and they love you and want to support your dream, but because it's a person who would like your particular book and will read it and tell you how it measures up to the things they actually like to buy and read. If you ask someone who's a non-reader to read your work, it will take them forever. They'll feel like they're disappointing you. You'll feel like you're expecting too much of them. Wah, wah, wah. If you can only find those people, give them a deadline. And if they miss it, ask somebody else and do not hold it against them. That's mm-hmm. my advice. And pick somebody that you can take constructive criticism from yes and if remember point you number one stand your mom criticizing you because it makes you roll up into a ball in the corner and cry <laughs> then don't ask your mom to, cr- right. to critique your book <laughs> that's why the writing group is so important too because right. you can find someone safe in there um it's it's about being safe but again point number one is to get enough space between you and the work that you can hear it mm-hmm. so sometimes that space is the time that the other person has your work so sometimes if you're smart you can say okay so uh, so and so i have until june 30th can you do it between now and june 30th and then tell yourself you're not even going to think about that book until june 30th and go away and then check back and see where's my file and and then say, I guess I need longer because it will build in a break between the time that you sent it away and the time that you get it back and get ready to do another edit when you get it back. Because mm-hmm. the feedback you get is not, you're just going to automatically accept. You're going to critically evaluate that feedback to do another edit, just like we taught you to do right now. And this will save you so much money when you do decide to pull the trigger on something more expensive. Yes. Any other final thoughts about actual editing before we read our sprints? Um, Along with what Tina said, uh, someone that you can hear the critiques from, make sure that the person can give you critiques because they love everything you do and you can do do no wrong. That's not going to do you any good at all. That's true. Right. Or they're scared to hurt your feelings. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah the goal it. needs to be a polished product ready for market. A polished product ready for market that will represent you well and will sell to the people you're trying to sell to, right? The game becomes selling it once you've written it. It's a different mindset and it's difficult. We're here for you. Come into our chat and ask for support. We'll give it to you. Okay, yeah. so uh, time to move on or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Everybody's favorite part, the feeding of the backs. What does that mean? Well, we would go to writing group and we would ask for feedback. And then everybody would say whatever. And I would say, well, is your back well fed so that we can move on without the person feeling like, how come she got so many pieces to say? And she got, no, if your back is well fed, you've heard enough. So this is the time for the feeding of the backs. We give tasty goodies. You're a great writer. <laughs> Only is bread. what we want. Only bread. No meat in this critique sandwich. Two slices of bread coming your way. Set your timer for 15 minutes and write. What was the prompt today, Tina? Where in the world is Jennifer Carl Dong? Now, I should make Rhonda go first because the prompt was her idea. Do you want to go first, Rhonda? I won't make you if you don't want to. Oh, that's fine. I don't go care. for it. Sure. It's short. Okay. <clears throat> I, I am definitely going to add more to this. All right. Mama, watch my skirts. Sarah giggled and spun herself around again, this time twice as fast as before. Jennifer gave her young child another moment to spin around the kitchen like a top before sending her back out to do her chores. Sarah slowed to a halt using the sideboard to keep her steady. The child's face looked slightly green, causing Jennifer to wonder if she'd let the girl play too long. But this was a festive occasion and everyone was cheerful and fun loving today. We all deserve little pleasantness, especially after that horrible winter we barely made it through. She kept the thought quiet. No need to remind anyone of our losses today. She stopped Sarah before she left the kitchen and removed a bit of straw from her lace hem. Strange that would be there, she thought, and once again kept it to herself. Mama, I can't believe today is finally here. Esther squealed, coming into the kitchen, startling Jennifer, who had already moved on to making biscuits. The fright caused her to send a spoonful of flour into the air, causing some of it to land in Jennifer's freshly coiffed hair, leaving a streak of white down the left side of her hair. Okay, I used hair like 15 times in the last No, time. no, I love it. Go, go, go. I'm done. That's it. That oh, it. oh, there's not more? No. Oh, why is there not more? <laughs> I love how you write. I, love I told you, you I have to finish it. <laughs> yeah, Jen, Ron, Rhonda's like, oh, there was so much more I wanted to say. I'm like, write it every sprint until forever, until it's done. But you do such a great job with the characterization. So it's this woman obviously knows it doesn't do any good to... And I so resonate with that. Like, well, there's a piece of straw in my dress, but no one needs to hear that. And no one needs to go with me down the path of remembering, you know, the loss of good brother John or what? <laughs> like, yeah. what? Who is this? Like, I and have also, to know. It was foreshadowing. Okay. This is really exciting. And, right. and I and I like that you were you the children's names mm. were the names from Jennifer's books. Yes, yes they're her little book babies. <laughs> Hester <laughs> and Sarah. This is going to be set in the old in the West. Is she in abandoning her, her family to go to a new family? <laughs> we don't know the backstory on her character. <gasps> Maybe they're going to go on a wagon train and they're going to go meet the women of the Wild West book series girls. Yes. Ooh, fun. Idea. Yeah. Ooh, fan fiction. Ooh, yes. Jennifer is fan fiction already. <laughs> Moving on up. Awesome. All right. Well, I will go next. That way it's not my voice forever all in a row. Um, here we go. It is. <clears throat> this is the wrong thing. Someone else has to go. Okay, I'll go. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You tease. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> there was a squirrel in the yard. It had been there all morning, hopping around, digging up whatever it is squirrels dig up. Making a mental note to look that up sometime soon, I went into the kitchen to get myself another cup of coffee. The phone rang. I looked at the screen and rolled my eyes before clicking the green button. Hi, Rhonda. I normally don't roll my eyes when Rhonda calls, but she'd been on a really dramatic streak lately. The last time she called me, it was because she had inadvertently placed her readers on the top of her head and looked everywhere but there for them. It was the first place I'd suggested and she'd been super grateful, but I was anticipating another dramatic episode and I was really looking forward to escaping into the Google world of Squirrel Facts. Where in the world is Jennifer? She asked. She sounded like she'd just run up a flight of stairs, so I expected there was something very terribly wrong. 
Why? What's going on? I asked, panicked myself. Irritated that I would let Rhonda's energy disturb my own peace, I breathed the now, now, now to bring myself back to the present and the likelihood of acorns and cleverly planted positions all over my front yard. I smiled at the recollection of the fuzzy-eared baby squirrel I had seen. Squirrels are scrawny here in Florida. I remember the ones in Michigan were plump. Jamie! Rhonda snapped me back to reality. Do you know where she is or what? Rhonda, what's going on? I was calmer this time. She's number one. That's what's going on. Number one? Where? What? Squirrels suddenly forgotten. I raced to my laptop. As usual, I had to bang on everything from the enter button to the space bar to, power, to the power circle in this corner to get it to wake up. This thing is like some kind of stupid magic genie lamp, I said, cursing because Rhonda seldom checks me on that, and I know I can get away with it. <laughs> Try rubbing it instead of banging on it. Maybe you'll get somewhere, she offered. Har, har, I snarked back, adding a genuinely surprised, you can hear that? Yeah, you're totally wailing on that thing. I'm surprised you haven't broken it. It's not my fault they make these things so confoundedly temperamental. Rhonda stayed quiet through my temper tantrum, and I was label, able to load up the Google. Okay, where am I looking? Where is she number one? Go to Facebook. What? Rhonda, can't you just answer me? No, just trust me. I went to Facebook, and there on my feed was a post Rhonda had tagged me in, showing Jennifer beaming with joy on the set of Jeanette Oak's latest book to TV miniseries. You're kidding, she won? Yes, they're going to take her on as a writer. She's getting a big pile of money and a contract and a secretary and everything. A secretary? I jumped from my chair and leapt up and down. She hit the jackpot. <laughs> the end. <laughs> that was not the ending I was expecting. No, me either. <laughs> I, I didn't have an ending. It took me forever to think of an ending. I hated it. I thought you were gonna. it was going to be about her book hitting number one last uh -huh. week. It kind of was like, then I just had the flashing cursor and I'm like, but mm. like, that's it. And so I just went, blah, 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 blah. That's awesome. I thought it was great. Uh, I'm so glad you liked and it. Very accurate in so many details. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we still, um, by the way, I just want to say that Piper also did the sprint and I retweeted it. Yay! Oh. Because oh, like goody. I'm not sure anybody ever does them. And so mm -hmm. yay, Piper. So the Christianity Writers Podcast tweeted a link to her blog. So if you go to our Twitter and look, you can click there and read what uh, Piper wrote. Yes, yeah, squirrels, ADHD, literally the squirrels today. Mm. So awesome, Tina. But what don't check you... until after the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Stay here for right now. What did okay. you write, Bambina? Well, I want to say that although the characters may resemble quite closely people in the real world this is 98 percent fiction oh okay ready mm -hmm. tina sat at the computer and stared at the podcast chat nothing she decided to check her email just the same old coupons for 10 percent off at bed and bath and beyond and brian cohen trying to talk her into his next vital course on book marketing and blurb writing delete 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 oh look PayPal has supposedly locked her account again, and she needs to open this email and click the link to update her information. Mark is spam. <laughs> Podcast chat. Nothing. Let's check Facebook. <laughs> Jimmy Hirschberger has posted in the Transatlantic Writing Buddies group. Ding. Oh, somebody's post posted in the podcast chat. Finally. Are we having a podcast today? Did I miss something? Rhonda Hagerman. <laughs> no little heads appeared to show anybody had seen the message but Tina. I don't know. I'm just waiting for the StreamYard invite, Tina types. It was almost 10 after 9, but a fresh cup of coffee sure sounded nice. Tina heads to the kitchen, having to water the thirsty Keurig, demanding its sustenance before it will comply with her request for 10 ounces of hot donut store blend. Mm. It seems like forever until the final pshing of air comes from the Keurig telling Tina that her hot brew is ready. A couple tablespoons of zero sugar caramel macchiato creamer, and she heads back to her office. There's a message from Jamie in the podcast chat. Still waiting for the StreamYard invite, it reads. Tina sits down and sips on her hot ambrosia, closing her eyes to savor it. Maybe she could play around or two of solitaire while she's waiting. She opens the game, then decides to post in the podcast chat. Where in the world is Jennifer Carl Tong, she types. She's not here today, Tina. You're supposed to start the stream yard, remember? <laughs> oh, man, Tina exclaims, working backward and spilling her coffee down the front of her in the process. Oh, man. 
I miss Jennifer, Rhonda said. <laughs> Me too, says Jamie. Boy, do I miss Jennifer, says Aww. Gina. <laughs> now that's that the 2% so that's true. The 2% that's true is that we miss Jennifer. Ra uh, Tina shows up. Like, it's freaky how Tina shows up when the chips are down and Jennifer's mm -hmm. not going to, like, this is not true. Like, Tina is not a relaxed if it's her duty, she is on it. And I just got to mm -hmm. give her a round of applause. Yeah. Because oh, thanks, guys. We would I'll not be here today. And Jen is usually the one who saves the day, but Tina's today's hero. MVP. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Awesome. And people think your chat, your sprint was very funny. By the way, they're laughing. And Piper's with you on the donut shop blend. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. So, uh, Jamie posting in Transatlantic Buddies chat. Yeah. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> okay. So, uh, all right. What is next? So we did all of the feeding in the backs. It feels weird with only three of us. That's the problem. So oh, yeah. we should have read Vipers. Oh, that's what we should have done. All right. right. Well, yeah. We'll maybe right next time. It. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, everybody, we're supposed to talk about what's next. So what's next for your writing career? Do you have a goal you want us to keep you accountable for? Or do you just want to shout out what you've been up to? Um, what's next for you, Tina? Well, I'm going to finish my book, Rough Draft. Ooh. And set it aside. Ooh. How many more words and, do you have? Well, I really stopped counting words. And I'm just trying to get the story finished. Because it's going to be around 70,000 words. And I'm close to 60 right now. So it might be you know, a little less than 70,000, a little more. The problem I'm having is I keep having ideas as I'm writing. And mm. what started out as 10 scenes left turned into 30. Oh, that happens. Oh. So, but that, no, I think it's a good thing. So okay. I'm yeah. just going to write it till the story is done. Yeah. And cool. the pressure to not do that is so for me internal. And um, I don't want to be an external pressure for you to ignore that. So as far as I'm concerned, take your time and do it right. So, And I just have to add. Maria Johnson, if you have never gone to Bed Bath & Beyond, you have not lived. That's all I have to say. Yes. Although if I could only take her to one, you know, mind-blowing experience, I would probably take her to the container store. <laughs> Jamie. When I was in Florida this year, I discovered the container store. Did you? I've never been there. Oh, don't go. I, like, I would Tina. like it. Don't I go. hate oh. shopping. Like, I loathe shopping. But you could take me to – my husband and I went on a date one time, and that's what we did. We went to Bed Bath and Beyond and we just walked slowly through the store and looked at all the stuff we want. Yeah. What I think they should have named the store is potential because you walk in there and you think your life would be so wonderful if you only owned all of these products. And all yes, the gadgets. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. I'd like to try. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, oh, Leah says her internal pressure is a real issue. I'm such a driver. Mm. I'm telling you, that's why I'm on Clubhouse, because you can go and find rooms where they're just playing like, you know, Oprah's 50 tips to success, listen and work. And you can just stream it and people will come in and like discuss like whatever I'm saying. You can find the Atta girls that you need over there. And that's why I'm advocating it this week. So my what's next is going to be um, filling up my I Can Do It tank on Clubhouse, um, putting out more content for my readers, and working on the novel every day from 10 to 12. If you don't get my newsletter, www.writingshorts.net. And my Instagram is starting to be a little more active as well. So you can connect with me over there. But the best way to connect with me is my buy me a coffee under J.R. Nichols, which is written right under my face. What's your, oh, we'll go here and then we'll go to Rhonda's what's next. Maria says the container store sounds so exciting. I can hardly contain myself. She says she couldn't help the awful joke. And I love that joke. It's like my too. favorite moment of the day, I think. <laughs> Carly can date herself hard. Okay. So, Rhonda, what's next for you? What's next for me is yeah. my developmental, not development, my edits are back and they've been back for a couple weeks. And so now Monday I start um, getting it ready for publication. Hopefully. I really am curious. Are you doing Kindle Vela with this? What are you doing? This one... Um, we talked about doing kind of Kindle Vela and when I go through and look at the edits, um, we're going to determine that then. 
Okay. I think that we are still going to do Kindle Vellet just as an experiment to see what that's like. But we do have a few other books um, to do on Vella if we don't mm -hmm. do this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Well, that's really, really interesting. And look, like you tend to throw books out there with little to no fanfare. Mm -hmm. And um, I want people to be invested in this series that you're writing. So mm -hmm. please do keep us updated on where it is because it's awesome and people are going to want to know about it. So don't hide it away from us. Okay. Yay. Piper. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope I will. I would love to hear any thoughts that you have on using it. I hope it's helpful. And if it's not, please let me know. Rhonda is so excited because Piper said that she has been using How to Plot Your Novel. Um, it's a series of workbooks that Rhonda and her mother wrote under the pen name D.D. Mm -hmm. Bauman. And you can buy them where, Rhonda? Amazon. Mm -hmm. And they are novel plotting resources. So if you haven't written your book yet and you're not mm -hmm. ready for an edit because you don't even have a book, go grab up those resources. So, yes. and yes. you can also find a link on ddbowman.com and also in the Christian Indie Writers podcast newsletter every week. Well, every yes. other week. Yes. And the Christian Indie Writers podcast has also published a book giving you 30 days of writing sprint prompts. Yes. That's Girl. right. Okay, so check it out. If you're a writer and you have a website and you're like, I don't know why nobody's buying my books, go write 30 sprint prompts based on our 30 prompts and publish them to your website. Now you have content. Ta-da! Right? Like content is just a piece of writing you have created. If you're like, why do I have no content? You shouldn't feel that way. Lots of opportunities out there. Just do the work and post some content. That's my lecture. All right. What is next? Um, Rhonda, ha what, what? So according to Google, there's no Bed Bath & Beyond in London or the UK, but there are other stores that can fulfill your household needs. I don't know. Thanks, I don't know, Google. Maria. I'm not optimistic. Mm -hmm. But do they go beyond? Do they go yeah. beyond the bed and the bath? That's mm -hmm. the question. The kitchen gadgets alone. Like I could spend hours there. I yeah. don't know. Oh, I have gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I have who's it's and what's it's galore. You want thingamabobs? I've got 20. But that should be their theme song. No big deal. I want more. That is their theme song. You go there and you buy stuff that you do not need. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a minute late now. Where's Jen to keep us on time? Okay. So I guess we're done, right? Do we have what's up oh, in we, the chat? It is what's up. Tina did her. She said she's going to work on a book. No? Tina, oh. did you do your what's up? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I That's all right. More. But Tina has a newsletter, which she did not mention. What's your website? Okay. And Christina then what's in the dot com. And I, I started sending my newsletter out less frequently, although I did get one person who didn't like that. So I might do it a little more frequently, but hmm. I'm still deciding. I just don't want to send out a bunch of new newsletters that have no value. Ooh, mm -hmm. it looks like we need to revisit this topic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I put personal stuff in there and I put fun facts about Alaska sometimes and um, I update you on what's going on with the book. So, All right. All right. So get everybody's newsletter, get connected, come and find me on Clubhouse because that's fun. I hope you can find an invite. Like I said, Tina has them. Um, you usually have to give someone your phone number. So it better be someone you trust if you're going to reach out. Like I wouldn't ask a rando for an invite. The whole point is that someone who knows you has to get you in. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and if you get an invite, respond to it because people only get so many and they just languish in the ether if nobody claims mm -hmm. them up. So um, it's not like I'll get it back if you don't accept it. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else? Oh, what's up in the chat? We have a lot of, or I would address them all. Keep going and let us know how you do next Friday. Is that right, guys? Let me make okay. one comment on one on Leah's. Um, chaos is a killer. And I'll tell you, last year I was going through a divorce and I was very physically sick and it was so hard to concentrate on anything, but you have got to put your priorities first. She and says, cut through the chaos. Mm -hmm. Sick dog husband and an mm -hmm. illness flare up. She's struggling <clears throat> for peaceful creative time. Rhonda, say whatever, like, do you have any last words there? Because I love that you were reaching out mm -hmm. to her yeah. personally. Uh, yeah, just your career or your uh, writing hobby, whatever it is, I know it's a career for you, I would assume. Uh, it is so important. And it's going to be there after all this other chaos has gone. So just continue to work on it. And we'll definitely be praying for you. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if your writing takes a back seat and when it comes time to write your book, and if anybody ever wants to ask you how long, <clears throat> excuse me, did it take you to write this book? You can say with honesty, well, how old am I right now? Mm. Because your art is the product of your experiences and you cannot produce art until you've experienced what you need to experience to produce that art. So right. take your time and live your life, live your life every moment, and then you'll have something to write about, even if it hurts. Yay. The hurt will be something in your writing later, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Live right now, even if it's not a writing life right now. Yep. All right. What else? Can we go now? All hearts clear? <laughs> Tina loves that. <laughs> not. Did you see the face? You totally made a face. I should have screenshotted it. It was great. All right. Um, oh, Gigi says, There's yeah, Gigi. I hope it's a better week. Aww. Gigi's our cheerleader. We love her. Okay. So, uh, and Leah says hugs. Oh, okay. Um, until next week. That concludes this episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. So until next time, may your pen be prolific, your deadlines be met, and all of your words honor Christ. Bye now. Bye.